We've all heard calls for a return to conservative underwriting. The fact of the matter is we're returning to precisely the point we were in in 1989. You'll see in 2009, 2% of Fannie's loans had FICOs below 660. It had increased to 18% in 2007. My estimates are in 1991, it was about 2%. LTV, 3.7%, 20%, 6%, over 90. Interest only, 1%, 15%, zero. Investor, 2.5%, 6.5%, 2%. Alt A, zero, 17%, zero. 2007 was not your parents' A quality loan book of business or the percentage of new mortgage accounts with FICOs greater than 660. This is the entire housing market, not just Fannie Freddie, includes FHA. 2010, 87% of the loans by uh, uh, mortgage, uh, people who took out mortgages in 2010 had FICOs above 660. That compares to 67% in 2005. In 1989, it was 87%. So again, we've come back full circle. Or how about home ownership rate? In 2010, 66.5. 2005, near the all-time peak of 69. 1991, 64%. However, many commentators have noted that given the baby boom aging, the housing home ownership rate would have gone up on its own without any changes in underwriting by about 2%. So I would say that would turn into 66%. These results tell us that, yes, we've come full circle. But at what cost? Untold millions of dollars, millions of dashed dreams, millions of foreclosures, and yes, trillions of dollars lost in an economy uh, set adrift. These results should not come as a surprise. Prime loans must be based on skin in the game, unimpaired credit, and an adequate and stable income, and I was pleased to see the administration's proposals largely embrace that. So to create a solid housing finance system, prime lending, not government guarantees, must once again be the foundation. I'd like to provide an overview on two fundamental issues and use the Center for American Progress and our own uh, white paper from the American Enterprise Institute to frame these issues. The first issue is, okay, first issue is, uh, should the government provide a broad-based guarantee to the private residential mortgage market? And the second is, should programs for assisted uh, low-income families be to become owners be on budget and limit risk for both homeowners and taxpayers? I think the administration lays out some of the issues on the government guarantee. The CAP proposal supports a government guarantee. Our proposal lays out very clearly why that's a danger to the taxpayer. Switching to the second issue about the uh, affordable housing, our proposal is very clear. I would only add that the CAP proposal uh, relies on language that says uh, the private U.S. residential mortgage market has the, quote, primary, primary obligation to provide an equitable outlook, outlet for all primary mortgages, assuming the primary market will be appropriately incentivized through the Community Reinvestment Act to serve low and moderate income communities. When the GSE Act was passed, I fully expected that it would lead to the eventual collapse of Fannie and Freddie. CAP's approach, like the GSE's Act, would once again be revolutionary, as was uh, implemented by HUD, and in my opinion, would result in subprime 2.0 which is something we can ill afford. 